Hello, my name is Brian Giordano from the University of Rochester. Uh, I'm going to be discussing a case of biologic repair of an acetabular cyst using interosseous bioplasty, graft net, and biocartilage. The patient in question is a young, healthy female softball player who had unfortunately experienced greater than six month duration, worsening left hip pain. She had experienced a decline in her range of motion, function, strength, endurance, and sport tolerance. Uh, she had pain that affected her quality of life, her ability to tolerate activities of daily living. The pain had begun to wake her from sleep, and she had begun to limp as a result of her symptoms. On her physical exam, she was mildly overweight. She walks uh, with an antalgic gait, um, incorporating a shortened stride length for comfort. She walked with a slightly externally rotated posture through the lower extremity. She did not have any suprapubic, superinguinal, or central core tenderness. Uh, she did have a globally restricted range of motion of her hip with significant capsulitis. Range of motion was compromised on her, on her affected side, 90 degrees of flexion with essentially zero in internal rotation and in mild external rotation before the point of pain in comparison to her contralateral extremity. Uh, she also has positive provocative testing for femoral acetabular impingement, including positive Fader and Faber exams. On her plane radiographs, essentially see a, a relatively normal uh, congruent joint uh, with a small area of lucency and the superior weight bearing the surface of the acetabulum. And on more advanced diagnostic imaging, uh, it's clear on the CT scan that you can see a large focus of subchondral cyst uh, with significant surrounding bone marrow edema. The case in question presents a number of treatment challenges. Obviously, we're dealing with a young, physically active patient, um, larger body habitus. Uh, we have to incorporate elements of treatment that are able to provide uh, options for both the marrow edema, the biologically reactive lesion, the articular surface, the subchondral bone, and then of course the surrounding labral pathology and synovitis. Um, in this case, incorporating some elements of strategic rehabilitation um, are gonna be important to optimize her post-operative care. So in considering options, we always start with conservative to the most invasive. Conservative options were not great for her because she had already failed exhaustive conservative management. Um, pain was affecting her quality of life. Uh, she was not able to do any more strenuous physical activities. Pharmacologic options should always be considered, including bisphosphonates, elements like parathyroid hormone, but in this case, they were not indicated. This lesion could potentially be accessed using uh, interventional techniques. However, the labral and chondral pathology, the, the deep filling could not be accomplished through a percutaneous technique. Open techniques could be considered, but at the expense of significant patient morbidity, uh, longer and more uh, exhaustive rehabilitation process and potential for other complications. Um, arthroscopic treatments have to incorporate the need for treating both the surface articular cartilage, the subchondral bone, and, or potentially both. If you're gonna consider biologic augmentation, we need to propose the idea of potentially using both allergenic or autogenous tissue. And then in addition, uh, incorporating some biologically active vehicles such as um, autologous condition plasma, PRP, or uh, bone marrow, maybe uh, other useful uh, adjuvants to this. Um, labral preservation in order to incorporate a, a sufficient labral seal to protect and optimize the healing environment um, is important as well. This is the setup on our back table. Um, you can see that obviously you have a very, uh, very organized system. I think personally it's very important to have a very well-versed uh, support rep in the room to make sure that uh, when you're using uh, a number of different biologic options, things are organized in a systematic fashion so that there's no unfortunate mistakes. So the selected approach that we used uh, was arthroscopic uh, to optimize the minimally invasive nature. On entry into the joint, um, you can see a probe uh, into the small nidus on the articular surface, probing into a deeper cavity. There's a surrounding labor repair. I place labor repair anchors adjacent to the cyst so as not to incorporate the drill tunnel into the cyst itself, uh, provide provisional stabilization of the labrum. Um, the surface articular cartilage is quite unstable. You can see the, uh, the hole for the IOBP needle. Um, I'm using a bone cutting sh uh, shaver right now to take autogenous cartilage from the femoral head, um, harvesting it using a graft net, and then using a separate graft net uh, to harvest femoral head uh, bone for an autogenous bone graft, which can then be mixed with um, DBM to fill the cyst. As you can see, FAI decompression is being performed. Um, a hip length IOBP needle was utilized to deliver the bioactive substrate into the, into the cyst. Biocartilage was delivered into uh, the surface articular cartilage in order to pr uh, provide um, bone grafting, both of a, of, a, of a bone marrow constituent into the cyst and then more of an articular cartilage um, matrix for the, uh, for the surface articular cartilage. Um, after the, uh, the dual grafting was complete and matured using fibrin glue, a knotless fiber tack was placed just above the drill tunnel from the IOBP needle to create a central suspension in the labrum, further stabilizing the final repair construct. 
In this case, post-operative care was initiated immediately after surgery with early range of motion, um, hips in general, uh, providing an intense biologic healing response, um, but made uh, even more aggressive by bioactive substrates. So early range of motion is extremely important. Uh, protected weight bearing was utilized for the first six weeks of uh, foot flat touchdown weight bearing. Um, skilled outpatient rehabilitation is crucial to ensuring an optimized outcome. Uh, this should be under the direction of a skilled hip rehabilitation team. Avoiding specific psoas and abductor triggers, which tend to include open kinetic chain core, uh, fatigue-based hip abduction uh, retraining. Early, we often institute some aquatic therapy at about two weeks to reduce the postoperative infection risk and add myofascial-based techniques at six weeks. In this case, we obtain a postoperative MRI at three months to evaluate healing of the repair construct and to ensure that no further progression uh, was, was occurring. We were excited to see at three months post-op uh, that there was significant resolution in surrounding marrow edema, good incorporation of the graft material into the cyst, no progression of the lesion, and stabilization of the surface articular cartilage. Uh, pearls of this case include extensive preoperative counseling. These patients really need to understand what will be involved in their peri and postoperative care. Uh, these can be painful procedures. Fortunately, in our arthroscopic nature, this allows us to optimize the effectiveness and, and accomplish this in a, in a method that is relatively pain-free. It's mandatory that a skilled and experienced rehabilitation team uh, with ancillary services uh, are available to ensure that the patient does not become stiff postoperatively, develop abnormal gait patterns, uh, or overutilize muscles which may not be prepared uh, to rehabilitate at certain time frames. A milestone-based approach is always used. Uh, interoperatively, it's extremely vital to have an experienced Arthrex uh, Biologics representative, both from the surgeon's perspective and also the uh, uh, perioperative surgical staff uh, to ensure that a smooth and efficient uh, care flow is promoted. It's key to, uh, if you're using multiple biologics, to have a very organized interoperative setup, both from the standpoint of biologics, graft nets, and implants, um, these cases can become very confusing, uh, so having these, these out in an organized fashion ensures that uh, substances are not mixed uh, in an incorrect fashion or at wrong ratios. Um, I typically perform the FAI decompression early, both from the standpoint of, of not wanting to have uh, bone debris um, floating around the joint after a repair. You're at a point in the case where you do not want to, to evacuate anything for fear of removing some of the graft material. The FAI decompression, um, while, while vital to the pain resolution in that portion of the procedure, is also a technical step uh, in procuring articular cartilage graft as well as subchondral bone uh, using graft net technology. Um, I provisionally stabilized the labrum uh, prior to grafting the, uh, the material, both to, to ensure that the drill tunnels did not incorporate into the, into the cyst pocket, also to ensure that the labrum was stable and was able to contain the biocartilage uh, graft in the surface. Anchors need to be placed strategically. Uh, as I said, I stabilized the final uh, element of the, of the repair with, with a fiber tack suture uh, just above the introduction of the IOBP needle for central stabilization. That worked well for this case with no further eversion. The tensionable knotless repair device allows a variable amount of tension um, so that you can, you can adjust how much tension is applied um, to, to be able to place the labrum anatomically. A hip length IOBP needle uh, was used in this case because of the increased depth and the body habitus dimensions of the patient. This allowed for effective interosseous delivery of our bioactive substrate. Um, we capped the articular cartilage to prevent egress. We did uh, use an aqueous delivery into the cyst uh, while the biocartilage was delivered in a, in a dry environment. Our preference is to use either an NG tube to evacuate residual um, fluid from the joint or to create a posterolateral lateral portal with uh, suction-based pledgets or uh, simple suction equipment through the posterolateral lateral portal. A 14-gauge spinal needle uh, was introduced through a distal accessory portal using fibrin glue or autologous thrombin to mature the graft construct um, in this particular case.